Greetings, personal financial management students, Finance 2205. Um, can you believe we are at the end of our third week of class, entering our fourth week? And I wanted to touch base with you because I have graded your Chapter 1 discussion. I want to give you some feedback on that, and I want you to take that feedback and incorporate it into your Chapter 2 discussion. Six of you have already posted for Chapter 2, and I commend you for that. You are doing the right thing. Now, if you feel that a change is needed based on what I'm telling you, then you can just simply repost as a reply to your original posting. Okay, I'll go out there and look at it. Um, or, you know, maybe you want to include the phrase, grade this one, something like that on yours. Um, I will see it out there. I look at all, all of your postings. Um, so you can still at this point, you know, modify or change your, your post out there. Okay. So it all is not lost and you're doing the right thing by, by working ahead. Okay. Uh, I want to start by just looking at your schedule. Uh, as of the date of this recording, today is Sunday, February the 9th, and um, I see that that roughly corresponds with week four in our virtual environment. We never, ever get together uh, in the classroom. You know, this Tuesday is just kind of a, a, a virtual pretend meeting date, right? Here's what's important. Studies show if you don't set a date on that calendar to routinely check into your online class, that out of sight becomes out of mind, and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you're doing this, okay, that, that you have a meeting date. Now, as I look at this, I see that, you know, you're starting to prepare. You're starting to go into Chapter 3. Like I said, six students already posted for uh, Chapter 2 discussion board. Fantastic. I commend you on that. You're exactly where you should be. But, you know, we are kind of um, closing down Chapter 2, and it does usually take me until the weekend after your assignment is due to make those grades and get back to you, okay? So, you know, it's not, uh, it's not multiple choice. I can't automate it. I have to take the time and go through it. Also, I'll show you the grades, uh, not your grade, you need to go look at your grade, but in general, the, the style of feedback I give on the grade, as you will see, it is extremely detailed. Folks, I do that because I care. I mean, it would be so easy just to throw a number out there or even slap a rubric out there um, and say, well, this is how I graded you and that's that. But I don't do that because let me tell you what I believe this class is about. I believe it's what your, uh, your higher ed pursuit is about. I don't know if you're pursuing a degree. I don't know if you're pursuing a technical certificate or just simply taking the course. We welcome all. But where you start is never, ever where you finish. This is about improvement, self-improvement, and elevating ourselves. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But we are going to constantly improve. And the way that we do that is through feedback. And I've given you a lot and I hope of feedback in your grade. And I hope this video helps to clarify and explain and provide general feedback to the class for your success. Okay? Now, always keep an eye on the schedule. You want to know something that's fun to do? Go back to the start and remember when you first looked at the schedule and you had this reaction, oh my God, she wants us to do what? And now here you are. You're on the second page. Woohoo! And you'll be going page by page by page. You just keep focused on that, okay? Now, let me also, um, while I'm in here, let me go to uh, the syllabus. I'm going to go to the syllabus. Now, you know, one thing, students at the end of the semester always go, what do I do about my grade? What is my grade? Well, you know, at that point in time, there's not a whole lot we can do. Semester's over, right? It's now. Now is when you look at that syllabus and you say, tell me again about those quiz grades. What is it? I have to make a minimum score, <clears throat> 8 out of 10. Okay, let me take that quiz again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. But what if I take the quiz again and I already got a good grade, and what if it hurts it? Well, it says right here, highest score will be the only score used in the calculation of your grade. Woohoo! Right? That, that sounds great. So, you know, make sure you're looking at the syllabus. That's my point here. But what we're here today to talk about is feedback from the, you know, pause discussion board. So let's look at that. Let's look at that. Apologize, my voice is gone. The first tip for success that I want to give you applies to this item right here. You must use proper spelling, proper grammar, and proper capitalization to avoid losing points. I actually repeat that right here. 
proper spelling, proper grammar, capitalization to avoid losing points. Folks, if I said it twice, I must, I must be serious, right? For many of you, perhaps all of you, but I tell all of you now, I gave you a tip for success that will help you not just in this class, help you in all your classes. You know what that tip was? That tip was to use a word processor. Now, <clears throat> I've kind of been playing around here a little bit. <clears throat> Apologize, my voice is about to go. I've done this video twice now because my computer crashed during the first one, so I apologize. I kind of wore out my voice in the first one. Here's an example. Perhaps I typed this sentence. In my opinion, Americans have been more debt than other countess? What? Now, this is similar to what I, I think all but two students gave me, to tell you the truth. And here's the problem. As a business professional, when you send this email out, and I'm assuming you are not treating me anything less than a team captain, a supervisor, a boss on the job, a future employer, because that's what this is about elevating to the next level. So surely you're not slinging this to me without putting some thoughtful effort into it. So I have to assume this is the best you got. Well, let me tell you how when I read this, because I don't know what you meant to say, and this is how your employer, your contractor, your whoever pays your money is going to read this. In my opinion, American, uh, oh, Americans have been, okay, wait, uh, in my opinion, Americans have been more debt. Oh, uh, um, in my opinion, Americans have been in more debt than 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 other countess. In my opinion, Americans have been more in debt than other counties, countries, countries. I bet she meant countries. Whew. One sentence, and that's what it took for me to understand you. I think I need to hire somebody else that can put it more like this, where I can just read it. I don't have to guess what they mean and interpret what they mean. I just read what they mean because they wrote it in such a clear method without the spelling and grammar errors. Folks, even one or two spelling errors is a distraction. Many of you, more than half the class, had five or more spelling errors. Oftentimes in your, um, well, if you had many spelling errors, then when I graded your assignment, I included a picture that showed each one of those spelling errors. And folks, it's not because uh, I'm just nitpicking you to death. It's not because this is a reading and writing class. It's because Finance 2205 is a business class. And as a business professional, we have to communicate clearly to each other. You know, that's where the, the legal uh, contracts and uh, the lawsuits start is because of misunderstandings, miscommunications. We have to be accurate with each other. More importantly, if there's something I want you to understand, um, I need to communicate it clearly. Otherwise, I could just go shout into the breeze. That clear communication, it, how can we function? How can I sell you on an idea if I can't? get the idea from me to you, right? So we have to be clear. We have to. Now, how does this work? Well, in a word processor, and, and let me let me say this real quick. None of us are perfect. We are going to make spelling and grammar errors. I'm going to make them. You're going to make them. The thing is to identify them and correct them. So when I typed this sentence here, the word processor automatically put these red and blue squiggles every time it saw a problem. I didn't do that. It did it. You say, I don't have a word processor. Every computer on this campus has Microsoft Word on it. Most, if not all, public libraries have Microsoft Word on the computers there. If you go online, you can Google word processors and you'll come up with free word processors. For example, Google Docs is a free word processor that's completely online. You don't even have to install anything on your computer that you could use. So here's how it works. I say, in my opinion, um, let me misspell it like I, oh, see how as soon as I hit the space bar, it said that's a misspelled word. Then, now it doesn't understand yet, it says, what is she typing here? Then other, oh, mis, misspelling, right? Countess. See how it, it says, what, what's going on? It did that automatically. Here's how you fix it. Right click on Americans. It says, 
these are this is what I think you might be trying to spell. Oh, A should even be capitalized. Maybe I didn't know that. So by using this, I actually become a better speller because I pay attention to the corrections. In my opinion, Americans have been more debt, have been what? Now see, it did not catch the fact that I should have said in. It is not perfect. We are not perfect, but we can do better than where we started. That's what this is about. Then, well, that sounds right to my ear, then other countries. But if I right-click on this, my accent is causing me to make a grammar error. Than, right? Not then, than. Well, I didn't know that, but I know that now. Word processor tells me to correct it. Then other countess, what? Now, this is kind of funny. I meant countries, but my misspelling was so far off that even the computer cannot quite get it. <clears throat> the best it could come up with is counties. It is not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But you got to do better. you got to do better than where you started. Now, if your spelling is so far off that it's not even in the right ballpark, you might have to use a dictionary. You might have to go online and... Google that word or Bing or whatever search engine you use that word so that it makes recommendations to you, okay? Get a friend to read this. Go over to the Academic Support Center and ask somebody, hey, can you just look at this and proofread it for me? Tell me if I'm making any obvious mistakes, right? Okay, that's what you want to do. Now, next thing I told you, many of you, is do not, and this is actually in the syllabus, do not save this document and upload it. No, no, no. That's not how discussion boards work. You don't want the other person to have to have a word processor, to have to download your document, to have to upload, open it. No, no, no. You want them to be able to see your thought. This is about clear, succinct communication, and opening and downloading and all this kind of stuff to files is not how we do it. This is how you do it. You select, I just drug over that, you want me to show you a really cool thing word processors do? If I double click, it selects the word. If I triple click, it selects the entire paragraph. It doesn't matter. Just drag over it so that it's selected. Put your mouse back up on top of it, not down here, back up on top of it. Right click. That's the other mouse button, not left click. You know what that right mouse button does? It gives you a menu. You start right clicking on stuff, you're going to say, I didn't know I could do all that menus are going to pop up all over the place, right? Did you know if you right click out here, I can edit the header? Do you know if I right click here, I get this menu? Do you know if I right click? I'm telling you, that's what it's about. Right click. Okay, first of all, when it's corrected, I'm sorry, let's talk. I didn't tell you how to fix them. Did, oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, right click, copy. Now, go over to the discussion board, start a new discussion posting, click into that little place that you're supposed to type. Theoretically, you could right click and paste. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, like I said, my voice is kind of going out. And and sometimes the, word, the web browser will let you do that, and sometimes uh, it will not. If it will not, then you can hold down the little button on your keyboard that says Control. You just hold it down. Keep it held down. It's not going to do anything. If you're on a Mac, it's Command. While you have it held down, lightly tap just one time is all it takes, I'm holding the control button now, now, la da 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 da, holding it down. One time I tap V, paste. That's what it does. Isn't that cool? Okay, control Z is undo. That's just a little factoid there. Okay, so when you do this, it will paste your corrected text. If this is too advanced for you, if this is too much computer stuff for you, then this is what you do. You might want to print this. You might want to keep this open on one part of your screen while you have your web browser open on the other side of your screen, and you might want to retype it correctly. Okay? Here's why I'm saying this, folks. Those spelling and grammar errors, they're costly. I deducted almost no points. If, if I deducted points for your spelling, it was really bad. Okay? So you can come up to the next level. You need to. It's a business skill. I don't push you to do stuff, folks, just because I like going out there and marking up your work. I have other things I want to do and other ways I can spend my time. I do this because I care about you, and part of that caring is, it, is developing your business skills so that you go into the workforce and you're successful out there. Your boss is not going to take the time to explain some of this stuff for you. It's going to be much easier for them to hire somebody else who's already doing it. So part of your academic career is moving yourself 
up the ladder so that by the end of the semester, your, your writing, your communication in general is much better. So let's talk about one other thing in terms of that communication. You know, I have opinions. You have opinions. We all have opinions. We were born with them. Uh, when we were 10 years old, we had opinions. We are two years old. First, it was the first word most, pe most little kids learn. It, you know, we'd like to say mama or daddy, but you know what it really is? No. No. You have that opinion from the get-go, don't you? You say, don't do that. The little kid will turn around and look at you and say, no. Right? They're going to tell you their opinion on that. Okay. When you're in a business situation, when you're in an academic situation, that opinion has to be based on a strong foundation. Okay? It has to have evidence. That evidence can be the research of others. We call that research of others the literature. Now, I've said this before, but let me say it again. In our class, the literature is one book. It's your textbook. Now, some of you actually went out and you looked at other sources, and I think that's fantastic. We've got to make sure they're reliable sources, okay, that, you know, they're real trustworthy and, um, and peer-reviewed. But we're not going to get into all that. We're just going to talk about our textbook. That is your literature. That is the primary, and that must be cited. in every Now, when I say citation, I'm not looking for APA and MLA. I'm looking for you to very simply tell me, where did you find this? What page was it on? If I go looking for it, and folks, I've read this book a lot. I have graded this assignment a lot. I know the page numbers. Don't be giving me all this stuff, because I already know, okay? I, I barely have to look. <clears throat> if I have to look, Okay, okay. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. Let's get back on point. Let's go back to the syllabus. In the syllabus, as you prepare your posting, you must write meaningful content that, that what? That demonstrates your knowledge. Folks, this is the essence of being a student. Meaningful content that demonstrates your knowledge. And in our class, of the text the textbook. If you use a word that is from the textbook, you need to explain it. You need to define it. You say to me, well, Dr. Joan, don't you already know what it means? Oh, that's not the question. I'm the one with the red pen. I'm teasing you, right? Let me get my, here's my red pen. I'm the one with the red pen. That means that you have to tell me, how do you know, what, what is this term that you mean? How do I know that you know? Okay, if I have to guess whether or not you know, I will always guess that you don't. Now, it's not necessarily because I believe that about you. It just means that you did not, within your posting, that you didn't successfully demonstrate or maybe didn't even attempt to demonstrate your knowledge of the textbook. Now, in Chapter 2 discussion, you are asked to make a choice between two different decisions, and I'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Folks, the kiss of death is going to be if you say both or neither. You have to take a stand. Some of you are going to say, I like this first thing. Some of you are going to say, I like this second thing. And if you are very passionate about it, first of all, I love your passion. But you must support your opinion from the literature, right? And you must do it quickly, not three sentences later. Don't rant and rave and then only at the very end say, oh, by the way, now, I'm not saying anybody who did anything like that ranted and raved. What I'm saying is that is the hallmark of, um, of kind of a poor discussion if you do rant and rave. And, you know, folks, really seriously, you all were very respectful, and I am very appreciative of that. And as we continue throughout the semester, um, you may find that you very much disagree with somebody or you very strongly agree for this person. Well, that's great. That's what academia is all about. And the way that we um, frame those discussions to keep them on point and to keep them factual and not just kind of opinions from our gut is, is we root them in the literature. We say this scientific study or this observation of this event, right? Now, if that sounds pie in the sky, this is what you got to remember. This is what I want you to do. Well, I'm, I am going to go to this now. I want you to state your opinion, and I want you to state it succinctly. In other words, don't give me seven sentences for your one opinion. You've got to get to the literature more quickly than that. Okay? If you don't, it is probably an indicator to you that you're going into a direction that you're veering off. So state your opinion. 
support your opinion very quickly with a specific reference to the facts. The key word here, folks, is specific not in general, not somewhere within pages 20 to 75, it, but there is a term, a definition, a five-step process, whatever it is, it's very specific, referenced on that particular page. What are the facts? And they have to come from the text, at least at, at initially, okay? Folks, you got to give a page number. We've said it, and we've said it, and we've said it, and I'll show you where, again, but you got to do it. Now, this would probably, for most of you, indicate a two-sentence posting, and that's not, not going to do it, okay? Even if you have one of those sentences that runs on and on and on and on, and those are not necessarily good. I'll talk about those in a second. But you need to now start to clarify. What did you mean when you said that? When you made your opinion and then you supported it, more clearly explain to me what you meant. If you used a term as you reference the textbook, define it, explain it. Did you observe, did you witness an example, many great examples that were posted this time to support your opinion? There might have been, you know, I'm not, this is general, I'm not talking about any one student on any of this, okay? But what happened to several of you is you made an opinion statement and then you supported it with an example. Um, there's uh, uh, there's an example that jumps to my mind, but I'm hesitant to use it. But um, it, that's not going to work because you've got to have more. You've got to have something factual from the literature to back you up on that example. Examples can happen uh, just just one time. I, I'll give you you know, and, I, and I'll let me give you an example of why this whole process is so important. If I gave to you. This is something one of my professors said to me. We all learn and grow daily. It's a journey, folks. Okay, so stay with me on it. We're going to keep getting better. If I gave you a bucket of rocks and I gave you a bucket of water and I said combine them, what would you have? If you just yelled out, what did you yell? If you just said a bucket of rocks and water, you are wrong. Because if you took the bucket of water and you poured it into the bucket of rocks, you would have water left over. So why, when we state our opinion, is this reference to the evidence, the documentation, the literature so important? Because when you made the statement, combine a bucket of rocks with a bucket of water, when I made that statement, I need somebody to go test that theory out. And we have researchers who do that. You know, your textbook is not written by just one person. Your textbook is written by many people, these are three authors, right? But even more than that, open that textbook, look at all the reviewers, look at all the editors. Folks, there is a lot of brain power that goes into creating a book. And it's because they are fact-checking every little, you know, sentence and, and example where somebody says, if I took a bucket of rocks and a bucket of water and combined them, I got a bucket of rock water. And we look for one of those many people to say, no, because when I did that, okay, all you're doing now is saying, I have an opinion that demonstrates knowledge of the reading, specifically from where, specifically what facts are we talking about. Let me clarify. Let me define the term. Let me give an example. That's an excellent post, okay? Folks, you're going to do this, and if you need to update your Chapter 2 post, you just go in there and do that. It's going to be okay, okay? So uh, six of you have already posted, so that's good. You're doing what you should do, okay? So this is going to help you go on that next step. Now, let me go back to pause. Let's get back in here and um, get my browser. And... Um, okay, where should I go first here? Um, let me let me start out with the discussions. As I scroll down here, here's chapter one. I've not changed the discussion posting directions at all. Okay, you must post your response before the others post are visible. <clears throat> Make a statement of your opinion. Support your opinion with information from the readings. Provide a page number reference from the readings. Add examples or other information that supports your opinion. Look familiar? If we go back to the syllabus, didn't I say the same thing in the syllabus? Here we are in Chapter 2. Make a statement of your opinion. Support your opinion with information from the readings. 
Provide a page number reference from the reading. Add examples or other information that supports your opinion. Guess what I'm going to see in Chapter 3, in Chapter 4, these same directions. It's critical. As I said, it's the basis of your academic career. It's, it's the basis of your business career because it's the foundation of excellent discussions. Right? We've got to do that. We've got to. It's just part of it. You'll do it. If you didn't do it this time, you'll do it next time and you'll get it. Um, have I said this already? Like I said, I've done this video a couple times now, so I might uh, not have said this, so let me say it now. I look to you to incorporate the feedback that I give. If not, the points will continue to be deducted at a higher value. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm not joking. I try to give you this good feedback uh, because I want to see you improve those results. And I think that you can do it. Okay, I think you can read that textbook and demonstrate your knowledge. So now let's talk about the, the feedback that is specific to you. Under Assessments, I'm going to click on Grades. Folks, you should be checking these grades every day because I'm telling you right here how many points 10 points, 10 points, 10 points, 10 points. Ooh, 45 points down here. 10 points. And how much have you earned? Well, we haven't done this SET yet, so we haven't earned that. Pause. Well, perfect score, but I don't remember taking that quiz. Oh, look over here. Overall feedback. That means the entire class sees this message. The pause quiz was unavailable, and so all students were awarded 10 out of 10 quiz points. Okay? Well, now here's the attendance first date reporting. I took that quiz, and I got a 1 out of no required points. In other words, folks, it's a bonus point. Well, ooh, Chapter 1 quiz. Ooh, that's bad. 2 out of 10. Now I have to think about the syllabus. What did the syllabus say? Syllabus said if I'm below 8 out of 10, 80 percent, that that's a zero, big old goose egg there, right? Oh, that's bad. So I bombed that one, but I do have a drop grade, so I've got to do better on these other quizzes. Oh, I didn't take the attendance quiz for the second reporting date, so I didn't get my bonus point there. Well, I'll have to do better next time. But I better start working on Chapter 2 quiz because it's due very soon. And if I'm going to repeat that quiz to get that really good score, maybe I get 100, right? Then I need to get started sooner, not later. All right, scroll down, scroll down. Chapter 1, Discussion. Look at all this feedback that Dr. Joan took the time to give me. If she took all that time, it must be important. Okay. Well, first of all, the feedback that the entire class sees is all grades posted. So all this other feedback is very specifically to me. Almost all of you have a picture in here as well that has your posting marked up with any errors or notes for improvement. Make sure you're looking at it. Okay. Now, what does it say? Consider this format, Z. McGrory, that's my student account, one opinion statement, direct support from the textbook including page number reference, explanation from the text or example that clarifies or explains the point you made earlier. What was my score? Oh my gosh, a 5 out of 10. That's bad. That's not where I want to be. That's no good. How did I come up with that? Well, was the answer relevant? Apparently not, because I got just one point out of four points possible for that. Was, were my sentences, uh, were complete sentences used in proper grammar? Well, grammar means capitalization, spelling, the whole nine yards. Obviously not, because I only got one point out of three possible there. Now, all of you in this category, that's a good pat on the back because you remain respectful. Um, I did see a couple where I felt that there was a little bit of a tem temptation to start going away. By and large, in those postings, there was very limited, if any, reference to the literature. You've got to make your statement support from the literature. Anytime, especially the more passionate your statement is, the more I say it, therefore, you know, declarative. In other words, you're declaring the more support you need from the textbook. Okay, that's what I'm going to be looking for. When I read one of those sentences and it says, you know what, the sky is green. I said it is, and it is. You know what, look that up on Wikipedia. There is such a thing as a green sky, but that's not my point. Wikipedia is not necessarily a peer-reviewed uh, source, but it's interesting read. You can find lots of information from CNN.com, uh, from, I mean, just a plethora of sites out there, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, I digress. Let me get back on point. The point is, you may disagree vehemently with that, but if there's specific references, specific knowledge, we might have to say, well, 
while that is true, I believe this because of that. And folks, I'm offering you choices in these discussion questions, um, and you are not always going to choose the same as all your classmates. It's just it just doesn't happen that way. If there if there was only one choice, I wouldn't give you two choices. Okay, so you've got it. Take the time, folks. Read this fee uh, feedback. I will look for it in other postings. Okay, so let me go back very quickly to the discussion, and let me give you this important tip for success as we move forward. In this particular question, is a person's advancement in an organization more a result of skills and initiative or personal contacts? Let me flash back to the syllabus. Make a clear decision. Avoid choosing both or neither. Folks, that's the fastest way to lose all your points that I can think of because you cannot have your cake and eat it too. Oh, we so want our cake and to eat it too. I want my cake and eat it too, right? But the question is, which one? Choose one. Is a person advancement in an organization more? Choose one. Which one is more? Yes, both are, are involved. There's many factors involved. Which one is more? A result of skills and initiative, or personal contacts. You are, ha are going to have an opinion, but you're reading about this. Support it from the textbook. Page number references, specific facts, specific, not general. Well, I think so, page seven. No, you think so is not on page seven. Okay, what do the authors think? What is that textbook reference? That's what I need to hear. Okay, all right. So if you have questions, one final note. Um, folks, I removed the Ask the Instructor discussion uh, posting. It is really not my preferred communication. I apologize for the confusion. Um, this semester is starting up a little bumpy because there was very delayed access to the, um, the course materials. And so, um, you know, I'm cleaning stuff up. In, um, kind of pushing things into the format, explaining the syllabus as fast as I can. A couple of you have emailed me questions. That's perfectly fine. Uh, remember to use the pause email and, um, uh, and ask me a question, and I'm glad to respond to it. Okay, so good luck. I'm sorry this message ran a little long. We haven't talked in a while. I hope it's helpful. Uh, work hard and keep up that great posting and those quizzes. I do see you out there working, and you want to keep that up. All right, thank you, and, and email me if you have questions. Bye-bye.